All right, folks, uh, here's my take on this uh, post. Um, my favorite tool, and I've said this in the past, is bevelers, uh, f specifically figure bevelers, and even more specifically, uh, the Bob Beard Black Crack figure bevelers. This is BF2 through BF8, and there's a big cleanup beveler that is sort of a matter beveler that's a specialty tool that's good for really taking uh, uh, the transition from beveling to flat way out away from your work. Uh, I don't use that one very often. Um, another alternative, if you don't have black crack money, is the old craft tool um, figure bevelers. The old ones have the proper geometry or close to the proper geometry. These have had the chrome taken off and have been reshaped uh, by a friend of mine who knows what they're doing. Um, thank you, Peter. And these are as good, in my opinion, as the Bob Beard ones now that they've been reworked. Um, but I just got them and I don't use them as much as I use my other ones. And even more specifically, this is the Bob Beard BF8. As you can see, I have worn the finish right off of this beveler. And at first it started to bother me because I thought, hmm, that's not cool, my finish is wearing off. But then I realized that this is actually a benefit and I'll explain why in a little bit. So, I have taken a piece of leather, it's wet cased, it's very wet. Um, but as you can see, I've carved a few different things on it so that I can demonstrate. Now, this here is a piece, the line that's been beveled by the BF8. And you can see that it fits right in this groove here. And you can see right where the heel ends, there's a shiny spot, a line right out at the end where this uh, beveler leaves its heel mark. But as you can see, compared to a steep beveler, this is a very smooth transition from your beveled area, or your, your piece, your artwork, your subject matter, to the background. Now, as I said before, this finish coming off is actually a good thing. Um, number one, it just shows the love for the tool that I have, but more importantly, uh, it means that this surface is completely smooth. It's been worn smooth in addition to being smooth when you buy it. Now this line right here, I can take this tool without even hitting it and just sort of use it like a modeling spoon. And it will remove this line that used to be here. You can see it's kind of moved it out a little bit, but you can use this tool in a variety of ways. So your standard beveling obviously looks like this. If you want to increase the steepness of the angle, you can take this tool, rock it towards your work, increasing the angle. And as you can see, that gives a much more steep bevel. Um, well, I, sometimes you need that to add a little extra definition. Now, I have all these different sizes, but I almost only use this one except for the very smallest details. And the reason why is the shape of this tool. The points here allow it to get into very steep areas or steep, sharp corners. So for example, this point here, you can see that the tool is much wider than this point, but I'm going to use it to do the inside figure beveling of this anyway. I'll show you how that works. So, as I said, you rock the tool up a little bit. Oops, need a weight. And then roll it back flat as you come away. And you can see, or you will be, that I've been able to fit that big beveler into that little tiny point. Now let's flip it around and do the other side. We're gonna go beveling away from me this time. Same technique. Rock the tool, give it a little tap, and as you move out, now, <clears throat> you can see here that I over beveled, I beveled over that point a little bit. Now you could go for your modeling spoon, which I recommend, but if you want to in a hurry, you can take this tool, as I said before, and use the flat surface of this as a modeling spoon or a smoothing tool, however you want to work it. 
Um, <clears throat> now I would take my spoon and I would detail this point right here, but as you can see, that's a very steep bevel. It's in a very sharp corner that was much, much narrower than the points of this tool, but it still works. We could do the same thing here. I was gonna do this one on the outside. Um, so I'll do that one outside just to show. Actually, you know what, no, we're gonna do this. Um, people talk about push bevelers. Who has a handle, you push bevel like this. You can use these tools to do the same thing. Set the tool face inside the line, your cut, and then just pull it and drag. Now this requires a significant amount of downward pressure, and it requires some strength to do it, but it can be done. This also works with smooth, steep bevelers, should you ever want to try it, but they need to be very smooth, otherwise they will stick in the cuts. Now this isn't the most efficient way for this particular item, but I do use it for long lines. For example, on a cuff or a bracelet, if I want to bevel something in a hurry just to get a start of a bevel, then I might use this technique. So you can see now that this has been beveled simply by using it as a drag or a push or pull bevel or however you want to work it. Now, more practical use is a flower, all right? This is a little bit of a sunflower that I've copied from uh, this, actually. I used it as a tap-off. It's a weight that Kate Dubio made me. Very fantastic. Um, now, beveling. This little tiny flower petals that you can see are much, much smaller than the surface of this tool, but we're going to use this one tool to do most of it. Now, here we go. Let's do this so you can kind of see. Okay, now, oops, oh, that's so not professional. <laughs> All right, as you can see, using solely the BF-8, I have given this flower quite a bit of depth. Uh, it's nowhere near done. As you can see, there's bevel marks all around it. But you can use the same beveler to clean those up just by going around it a little bit. I should note that this would be considerably easier if my leather was not as wet as it is, but I was excited and I didn't want to wait. Nobody knows how that is, do we? Now, um, because the leather is a little bit dry and it's difficult to, um, difficult to contain or clean up this area with the leather being as wet as it is with this tool, uh, I'm going to show you another use for it. 
on these same flowers, you can add dimension on the petals themselves. So they are not flat. They're going to have some curves in them. So there's center lines on these petals. You can see that they're lightly in there from the tap off. So I just take my same tool, find the center line, and then work the tool lightly down that center line. This works for leaves, it works for flower petals, it works for many, many things. Obviously you want to keep your petals, that center line, going right out to the point. And it helps to look at the nat nature a little bit or have a good photograph to reference. But now, you can see using the BF8 only, I've added some depth or more depth to this. Now I'm going to flip it around and do the other side because you don't want it to have uh, a sharp ridge in the center. So you're going to bevel exactly in that line that you just created, but you're going to bevel it the other way, which is called a double bevel i.e. beveling both sides of a line. This is a big technique in figure carving. And it's in uh, pretty much everything that Al Stolman's published about how to figure carve. Check it out. All right, so now I have taken that same tool and done 90% of the work. From this point forward, everything that I would do would be using a variety of tools to add texture, depth, dimension, etc. But the big work is done, and that is why the Figure Beveler BF8, or the Tandy equivalent, which is an F897, where it is. You can see that there's a significantly different shape, but you can do the same work um, with this one versus the Bob Beard. Anyway, that is why this tool is my absolute favorite. It's one I use in every carving I do. Thanks for checking it out.